the littlest number. What is going to happen here? To reduce our carbon footprint, management is requesting the smallest numbers only. This is a public relations exercise. The results are going straight into the landfill. <laughs> you want to buy a sandwich? And there are 10 sandwiches listed on the menu. And you don't have much money because of poor financial decisions. How do you find the least expensive sandwich? Don't ask me. I bring my own lunch. Peanut butter and jelly. Uh, I haven't had peanut butter and jelly for a while. Uh, Video games keep deciding my eating habits, and it's a problem. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking like, oh, I should just go buy a loaf of bread and some peanut butter and jelly. I have not taken part in a long time. <laughs> it's, when you make your own groceries, uh, just will forget about entire options for long periods of time. Strawberry jelly, obviously, I'm not a monster. Uh, for each zero terminated string in the inbox, send to the outbox box only the smallest number you've seen in that string. You will never be given an empty string. Reset and repeat after e uh, for each string. What's a zero terminated string? Go ask your boss. Yeah, on the, on the previous floor. Uh, how'd you get here is the real question. Okay, this one sounds less hard. Basically, I'm just gonna keep grabbing a number over and over again. And I'm gonna check it against the previous number to see which one's bigger, and then hold on to the, and hold on to the smallest one. And then when I hit a zero, I'll turn in what I'm holding. That sounds easy enough. So inbox. Uh, where, where should I put the zero? Put zeros on the board. Moment. Wait, I can't put zeros. In the, wait, no, I don't need. I don't need to put zeros on the board because I'll be placing this anyway. So place this. Copy to there. There we go. Uh, then go back to the inbox. Grab the next number. Uh, what do I want to do at that point? Uh, I need to compare the two of them with each other. Uh, but I don't want to lose it, so I have to be careful. So copy to one. There we go. Let's give these names. I like this tool. Old. N The whole different skill trying to type, trying to, trying to write with the mouse. Ah, God, what am I doing? What the fuck is happening in my brain right now? Okay. There we go. It's, uh, it's weird to think about, but there's the whole part where you're writing with a pen where you put the pen down against the paper to physically write, like to press against the paper. But when you're writing with a mouse, you do that by clicking and so, like, weird muscle memories of how to move your hand conflict with the feeling of lifting your index finger, but just your index finger, and I don't know. Stuff was getting crossed. Well, now I'm not getting perfectionist about this shit, because that was that one's too bad. Like, not recognizable as a D, almost. Alright, anyway, so, first number goes here, second number goes here. Shit. Nah, those actually don't work as labels. That only works as labels when I compare like two things with each other. If I compare more than two things to each other, then it's just gonna get confusing. So I, all I, an, an arbitrary label is fine. Anyway, copy to zero. <laughs> that was a big waste of time. Copy to zero and copy to one. Cool. Now I need to compare them with each other. So I'm currently holding one. So let's subtract zero. Yeah. If I subtract to zero, and it becomes negative, then that means that... <sighs> Figuring out how to make this land work in this linear sequence is interesting. So it's not just enough to have the logic of how it has to work, I have to figure out how to communicate that log logic within the uh, confines of how the system works. Alright, so if it's negative, then that means that... zero was bigger so if negative then I want to copy from one because that's the current smallest one otherwise 
I want to copy from zero. If I cut, so yeah. Yeah. Hmm. The issue is now I need to have a reverse sequence because I put down one then zero. Uh, uh, Hmm. No. This is going to make more sense than I thought, actually. For some reason, I thought I was going to be going back and forth and back and forth, but no, I'm going to keep restarting over and over again. So, now I've determined which one is the smallest one, and I need to take whatever the smallest one was and put it in old, basically. Cool. Okay, so... I said if negative, put it in new. Otherwise... We're, okay, so I need to make you jump past that instruction. So if it's negative, I'm gonna copy from new, because that means that the new one is the small one. And if positive, which means just not if negative in this case, then it'll skip over that instruction because it's gonna copy from old. Okay. Now the goal is going to be to... No. No, that, there's no there's no reason to copy from... Alright, so I'm gonna want to keep old where it is. So there's no reason to copy from old at this point. Because... It's already there. But yes, if negative... Let's get rid of this one real quick. Uh... Shit. I may have gotten everything mixed up. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. Now I guess I do need a jump then, huh? It's all convoluted. That I, I should probably just make it so there's not such an unnecessary number of jumps involved. Fuck it. Uh, so yeah, if negative, it's going to copy from new. And then copy to old. So it's overriding that number. But if it's not negative, it's going to jump past that sequence. And we're just going to grab the next thing because old is already okay. Cool. So now... I'm gonna have to deal with zero at some point. So this is if zero. Oh, look, that came out really clean. Look, look I'm, I'm like oddly satisfied with how nice that one kind of came out. All right, so first of all, there, so there, there never be, there'll never be an empty uh, string. I have to do if zero. Because if the second one I grab is zero, then the string's already over. In which case, uh... I'm just gonna do a generic one here. It might be slightly redundant in its description, but that's fine. We're gonna... If we reach a zero, we copy from old, and we outbox. And then we jump back to the beginning. That's the whole... That's more or less the whole equation. I just need to figure out how the sequence loops so that it keeps going until it reaches the zero. So that's, that's the next thing I need to set up. So... If negative, it copies from new, and then copies to old. Otherwise, it stays the same. And now I probably want to make it just loop back? I think all I want to do is make it jump back to here. Basically. Uh, at the inbox grab, yeah. Those, so if we start off by copying to old, then we go to the inbox again, we compare them, and then it goes back to the inbox when it's done. And it will keep looping until it reaches the next thing from the inbox being zero. I might have missed... I might have fixed... I might have already finished it or I might have made a horrible oversight. Uh, let's find out. I'm blanking on the next step, which either means I already finished it and that's why I can't think of the next step. Or I've made a horrible mistake. There we go. So it just keeps grabbing a smaller number, but then it's like, oh shit, that was a zero. So it's scared of that. There we go. Now override that. Did I do it already? The surprise with some of the puzzle things like this is sometimes I'm so in my head of trying to solve the crazy scenario, uh, I don't realize I'm done when I'm done. And I just sit there blankly like, oh shit, I can't think of what to do next. What's wrong with me? And then I realize, oh, I can't think of what to do next because I've already solved every problem, perhaps. This is neat. Anyway, I'm bored now. 
That looks like a long string to test. There we go. Did I do a good job? I bet that I bet that I had a very inefficient code. Oh. Oh. I, the code was less inefficient than I thought. Oh well. I'm gonna lose my. I, I might lose my mind if I have to. If de, if I have to try to efficiency everything, I'm just kind of happy to. I'm just kind of happy to solve things, like at all. Uh, should I keep going in the order of the numbers, or should I stick to the right side for the string, then come back when the color's over? The left side, <clears throat> the left side are the challenging optional ones, but I do want to do everything. It's just, oh, the damage spike, oh, the damage spike. If the uh, video durations of the series are all over the place, they might be. I don't know. It might be because some of the videos are so, some of the levels are so long that they can make their own level, and I don't want to. I don't want to cut an episode mid level, so. I can definitely see the episode lengths getting weird, if that's the case. Might, they might be very short or very long in alternating fashion sometimes. How many hours of work can you fit in one day? Not enough. There's always a sad remain, uh, remainder of unworked hours. Good thing we have these optional night shifts to cram in more. Aren't you great? Yes, I can tell you are an enterprising worker. I haven't been home in about 25 years either. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that they're talking about night shifts, but also these levels are called years. So that just raises questions about how this continuity works or how time is measured or what any of this means. I still can't really tell. For each two things in the inbox, outbox the remainder that would result if you had divided the first by the second. Oh, we're just sub. Wait, what? Oh, we don't have divide. I was I was searching for the divide function. I'm like, what? You're gonna give me a new uh, function and an optional thing? And then I, I'm like, I, don't, I can't find it. And I look at here. I was like, don't worry, you don't actually have to divide. <laughs> and don't worry about negative numbers for now. Okay. I keep thinking that as like uh, as like eh, if a negative number happens, don't worry about it. But what they really mean is a negative number won't happen, and that's very important information. Why is it sometimes a vertical thing and sometimes a horizontal one? Anyway, I've never really used the whole track when they give, make it available to me, do they? All right, so check the first, so check two things. It's always gonna be two things in a row. Okay, so inbox, copy to there. Inbox, copy to there. Maybe. Uh, outbox the remainder that would result if you divided the first by the second. Okay. That means we're going to subtract the second one from the first one over and over again, basically. Hmm. So, let's say... Subtract... We're going to subtract zero. I guess copying to one is pointless right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to copy to one afterwards, actually, because we're going to put the remainder down each time. No, we have to copy to no, 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 no. We have to copy to one first because if we don't do that, then it might become it might become negative. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if negative, we're gonna jump ahead, and basically, if the result is negative, we're going to copy from one and outbox that because it already is the remainder. Uh, if you divide the first by the second. Um. Divide the first by the second. I think I got it backwards real quick. We're dividing the first one by the second one. That means we're subtracting the second one from the first one. Right. So, copy from zero, subtract one. There we go. Gotta get this actual logic straight in my head. Yeah, divide the first one by the second one. So we're subtracting the second one from the first one. It means we, we basically want to be holding the first one and subtracting the second one. Yeah, which confusingly is named one, of course. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to call this one subtract to keep it straight. Alright, so copy to zero, copy to sub, 
subtract substit sub, then if it's negative, copy from zero and outbox that. That's the remainder, it's just the original number. But if it's not negative, we're gonna jump past that. And we're going to keep going, I think. Uh, yeah, subtract sub. Hmm. No, I need, I need to have a copy to zero. Yeah. So we're here we check to see if the thing has become negative. If it becomes negative, then we throw away what we have right now, grab what was already in zero, and we turn that in. But if that's but if it's not negative, that means that what we have right now is progress towards finding that remainder. So we're gonna overwrite the zero, and now we're gonna switch, and then we're going to uh, then subtract again. Yeah. That seems about right. I think that loops at that point, basically. So it's just gonna keep looping. But, if it becomes negative, then we go back to the negative part. Way too long, especially since I know that it, ah. What? I guess it zooms into maximum range. Huh. Weird. I was- I was- I just liked how it- previously that circle was so nicely framed where the- the scrap got shorter, so I thought it would just get shorter and look nicer, but no, it, it zooms into maximum width and height. Uh, until it fits. Uh, Jesus. I gotta tell if I, this even makes sense at this point. Yeah, it's just gonna keep copying from zero, copy to zero, then subtract, then copy to zero, then subtract, subtract. It's gonna keep doing that until the result is negative. And then if it is, if it turns out to be negative, it goes back and it copies from zero, the last one that didn't make a negative, and it's gonna outbox that. And then... I haven't given it an out yet, right? So... After it outboxes... Yeah, these are both arrival points. So after it outboxes, I then need to loop back to the original part of the puzzle to start the whole thing over. It has to reset. Uh, and this is kind of a mess, so I've kind of lost track of it, so let's just see if I've won already or not, or if I've overlooked something important. Alright. Also, to see if I just got the division backwards somehow. Oh shit, that's negative. Let's grab the one and turn that in. It didn't get mad at me, so that must have been the correct input, and now it looped back. I think I did it right. I think I did it right, you guys. Right? Yeah! Holy shit, I felt like a lunatic, and I actually did it right. And yeah, I'm... In particular, I think that, uh... Ooh! Speed challenge successful. In particular, I think my jumps are inefficiently laid out, but I'm okay with that, honestly. <laughs> I think I just... I think I could probably reverse the whole sequence so that I'm not having to do it the negative jump the way that I am, so I could do it in a better order or something, but I'm just happy to win. <laughs> 25. Cumulative countdown. Year 25. What is the purpose of this assignment? I think it's something about calculating the volume beneath staircases. We have to put the intern somewhere. We have a vast stairwell here. Oh. Did you take the elevator? Well, nice of you to show up. <laughs> yeah, there's not, there's not even a staircase that leads into here. The elevator leads directly into the puzzle room, which is the entire room somehow. Huh. Alright. For each thing in the inbox, outbox the sum of itself plus all the numbers down to zero. For example, if inbox is three, outbox should be six. Okay, that doesn't sound hard. That does not sound hard. Okay. 
uh, inbox. So grab the four. We're going to copy it to zero. Yes. And then we're going to outbox that. And then we're going to bump down zero. Yeah. And then outbox that. And then we're going to just loop that, I guess. And then if zero, go back to the beginning. Is it... Did I already solve the whole puzzle? I'm actually not sure. That seems too simple, but it makes sense to me. Bad outbox. Management expected 10, but you outboxed 4. Oh, right. Don't outbox it, dummy. I'm in Fibonacci mode where I'm used to outboxing everything. Uh, whoops. Yeah, that didn't... Wow, that was not even close. <laughs> not even close. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of a bunch of the shit because it doesn't make sense. All right, so inbox, copy to zero. Cool. We're now going to... Right, the annoying thing about bump negative is that it reduces what's in your hand right now. Okay, so copy to zero, and then let's say copy to one. I'm going to call you sum, and I'm going to call you minus one. There we go. So this is going to be the thing that we actually put in, which is the sum of all the things. So we're going to copy to both of them to get things started. Cool. We're then going to bump down negative one, because that's what it does. And we're going to add sum, copy to sum. And we're going to loop that. See, that always picks up whatever's negative one, and whatever I'm holding doesn't matter at that moment. Then we add to sum and copy to sum. So it'll be the sum will be equal to two times. It'll be equal to itself times two minus one, basically. And that's so that's the sequence down at that point. Uh, now I just need to come up with the escape, which is that if zero. Whatever I'm holding when I get bumped negative one, if zero, it'll break the cycle, and it will outbox. It has to, wait, no, it has to copy from sum first, then outbox that, and then start the whole thing over. Oops. There we go. I'm like, what have I done? Uh, yeah, copy from sum. Uh, uh, I, if I made a mistake, I'm not catching it yet. Let's just. You know, before I overthink things or over rescan it too many times, let's just calmly and politely just let it test itself and see what happens. I believe it said 10 had to happen, so we're good. Yeah. I don't see why this would ever. Oh. Yeah, I see what's happening there. <laughs> they put a zero in. Okay, that's fine. Uh. Inbox. Uh. No. I have to add an if zero clause. Just put it at the bottom so it's out of the way. If zero, uh, we're going to outbox. Yeah. That's really it. And then we're going to loop back around. We. I think that's all I really had to do. Success? Success? Su Yay! Get- Man, you suck. Ooh. Neat. Honestly, yeah, I think alternating between really easy and really hard over and over again actually makes things kind of easier. Ah, uh, now I've got a weird conflict here where this is to the right, but that's on the left. Normally I go right to left. But that's a cutscene, and it's the color of the next region, so I'd probably do this one first, which means I gotta do two hard things in a row. This is also just a cutscene, so it barely matters, but... Yeah. But that's the last color. Where's Carol? <laughs> okay. Small divide.
Remember last time? When I told you you didn't need to divide? Well, now you get to. Oh. Uh. Where's divide? <laughs> Wait, where's divide? Tell me more. Yes, you might notice this assignment similar to the one we worked on together one evening not long ago. You may go back and review your work if you like. Did you know you can also copy and paste? Before you get any ideas, please note that we keep strict inventory on the office supply cabinet. Uh, for each... For each two things in the inbox, how many times does the second fully fit into the first? Don't worry about negative numbers. Divide by zero or remainders. Self-improvement tip. This might be a good time to practice copying and pasting from a previous assignment. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Mad module. And... Copy. Because we're probably going to iterate on this. And paste. There we go. Paste. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. They gave me a zero for good reason, too. So I think what's going to happen here is I'm going to be subtracting from... Uh, the given number over and over again like I did before, but I'm gonna add a secondary uh, thing where I bump up a particular, I'm gonna add another cell, and I'm gonna keep bumping up that cell's value from zero up by one over and over again for each time the division is successful. Which largely should work out. I just gotta parse my own shit again, basically. So this is the jump if negative. If negative, it just stops and, and outputs it. So, uh, Let's call it N. I don't know what to call the number of times it was divided by exactly. Uh, call it the dividend? I have been out of school for so fucking long that like... Ah, quotient. Let's be smart. Let's be smart. It's the quotient. Some good handwriting right there. Boom. That's an, that hurts my brain. O O T I E N T. It's horrible. <laughs> the pen is so thick for how little space you have. It's horrible. Yeah, it's the divisor, the dividend, and the quotient. That makes sense. Uh, but if I use divisor and div dividend in a sentence, I'm gonna just actually mix myself up. The divisor is the thing, is the smaller number, well, not necessarily the smaller number, but it's the thing that you're dividing the, th the, the bigger number by. I, I, I said it again. God damn it. It doesn't matter. Let's not obsess over, uh, terms I'll never use most of the time anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, at the very beginning of the sequence, what I need to do before I even get the inbox is I need to, uh copy from zero, which we're going to label correctly. So copy from zero, copy to quotient. There we go. So that'll become zero, because that's our answer location. Cool. We're now going to copy... We're going to do the normal stuff, but we're going to change what happens normally, because normally what I was doing was I was... Uh, the subtracting is normal is the if negative jump and that's largely true is I'm going to copy from quotient and outbox that because that's my answer but here's the jump for if it's not negative so this is the this is where the thing has to happen so it's going to copy from zero it's going to subtract that yeah and then we're going to see if negative this should be after the if negative yeah we're going to negative... No, not negative bump. Get out of here. We're going to positive bump quotient. So what it was doing before is it was copying to zero uh, its new number as it iterates because it's we're dividing over and over again and we were subtracting from subtract. Uh, we were su we were holding the, the our, new, our current in-process number. We were subtracting the sub field from it. And that was us making progress through the process of very slowly dividing manually. Uh, and then each time we were checking to see what we were holding as negative. 
And previously, if it was negative, I would grab what used to be in zero and turn that in because that was our remainder. But now we're not doing a remainder. So instead what I'm doing is if it's not negative, we're going to bump up the quotient by one to say that we've successfully divided by sub one more time. But if it is negative, we're not going to bump it up by one. And we're going to jump back to this part about turning in the answer. Where we do this thing where we copy from quotient and turn it in. I think this is a successful edit of the previous answer to make it work, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll find out. So first of all, we're putting zero there so that we can get things started. So here's five and two. So we're going to... this. The answer should be two. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Okay, so what happened is... So, uh, jump if negative. Oh, jump if not negative. Here I need to add a bump for quotient. There we go. I think I fixed it. I didn't account for the earlier part of the puzzle. The earlier part of my equation, I mean, where I was before the loop and doing setup stuff. The answer should be one. Oh boy, no, new problem. Okay, new problem. Uh, okay, no. Wait. No, not a new problem? Not a new problem. Necessarily. No. That's supposed to be two, we meant, yeah. Uh, there's a problem at the beginning. Uh, so, bump up quotient. Let's see here, subtract. It's copying, copy to sub, copy from zero, subtract sub. Yeah. I need to make sure I copy to, copy to zero. Because otherwise I'm holding on to quotient, which then it jumps to here where it copies to zero. Oh yeah. Yeah, I moved the copy to zero to earlier. This is going to have to become a copy from zero because I'm getting rid of the fact that I had to do. I have to, I have to bump up quotient, but that puts the that puts the result of that in my hands. Let's see, the answer should be two this time. So it's going to bump that up by one. Okay. How? Now it's got an infinite loop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did I do this? Copy from zero, subtract sub. I mean, what happens, I let I let zero get bigger than sub, so now it'll never stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, I really should have debugged. Uh, so it's copying to zero. Goes back to the inbox. Copy to sub. Copy from zero. Subtract sub. Boom. So this time the answer should be two. It's not negative, so it's gonna keep going. It's gonna copy to zero. It's gonna bump the quotient. I copy from zero. Sure. It will now subtract sub. And it's not negative, so we'll now bump quotient. Ah, uh, that's what happened. I need to copy two zero here before it does the bump. There we go. I think I fixed it. Yeah, that that fucks with me. The when you're when you're using the bump feature, it picks up the result, and you have to be you have to remember that every single time, or you're gonna lead to lead to really weird outcomes. The answer should be three. There we go. I think we fixed it. 
but we'll see. Uh, was that was that the right number of outputs? I guess so. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. I'm trying really hard. Oh, hey. I keep winning the speed challenge. That's interesting. I wonder what that says about me as a programmer. If I keep hitting the speed... All day I've been getting the speed challenge. I have, like... I mean, these were easier puzzles where oftentimes every, every player would get the exact same answer. So I, I can see why these are both double greens. Here, I'm, I'm just always getting the speed challenge. I wonder why that is. Huh. I mean, I guess that's just the way I'm processing the problems in my brain, is I'm finding the fastest way to solve the problem, which is not necessarily the same thing as the fewest instructions, it's just the most direct solution. Whereas going in the other direction, you might have a really brief number of instructions, but they might have a lot of redundant steps as a result, because you're looping something, probably, to reduce how much, uh, how much text there is. And if you're looping forever, then you probably have a thing where... Yeah, you'd have way less text, but it, it'll but it'll take forever to do it because it's of how many conditional statements there might be. I don't know. I don't know. 